What's going on, everybody? This is the by district playoff edition of the Temple Daily Telegram High School Football Sports Podcast, or Temple Daily Telegram Sports Podcast, the TDT Roundtable at a Square Table. But we are here. We are ready to discuss. You just missed a pretty good debate off the air that we should have been recording yeah. earlier. Yeah, ketchup or mustard. No Still one could decide. Mayo. Yes, to say mayo. It is a hot dog a sandwich. Yeah. Josh Weaver, back with everybody, all 40 of you listening. Greg Willie's over there. Hello. Daniel Zapata's over there. Hello. Marcus Hood. Hello. Ah, oh, no howdy this week. Well, y'all both went with hello, so I thought I'd keep the trend. That's right. The playoffs are here. We've done all sorts of podcasts this year, and time went by pretty quickly, and we have finally arrived to the postseason. Teams are in, teams are out, but we're talking about the teams that are in. And here's the list. Before some of them bow out. That's it. Some teams only have 48 minutes left in their season. Some teams more. At least half the teams out there. That's it. A lot of math going on. Check we're it in out. Trouble. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Class 6A Division 1, Belton at Rockwall, 7.30 p.m. Friday. 6A Division 2, Mesquite Horn at Temple, 7.30 p.m. Friday. And Copper's Cove at Longview, 7.30 p.m. Friday. 4A Division 1, Lampasas at Freeport, Brazosport. That is not where Daniel Zapata went to school, but it sounds similar. Pretty close. Yes. Not that. No. 3A Division 1, Academy versus West, 7 p.m. Thursday at Waco ISD Stadium. Also Thursday, Troy versus Teague, 7.30 in Mejia. And also Thursday, I'll jump down, 3A Division 2, Rogers versus Edgewood, 7 p.m. in Whitney. Back up in 3A Division 1, Cameron Yo versus Whitney, 7.30 p.m. Friday in Mejia. And Rockdale against Grandview, 1 p.m. Saturday at Waco ISD. Uh, in Class 2A Division 1, Holland versus Junction, 7 p.m. Friday in Buda. Buda Hayes. That's it. Class 2A Division 2, Granger against Louise, 7 p.m. Friday in Sealy. Taps Division 4, Central Texas Christian at Tomball Rose Hill Christian, 7, 7 p.m. Friday. And in Taps 6 Man Division 2, Holy Trinity Catholic versus Abilene Christian, 7 p.m. Saturday at Abilene Shotwell Stadium. Is that one going to make deadline? Probably, well, maybe. It depends. They have that 45-point mercy rule. Yeah. Um, but still, 7 p.m. Friday. Ooh, oh, wow. uh, well, if, well, if they're going up against Abilene Christian University. Is that what I said? Possibly. No, but... Oh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is their feeder <laughs> like, program. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that could be interesting since Abilene Christian University doesn't play six years on. Stranger things have happened. Especially in Abilene. Especially in Abilene. Spent four years there, especially yeah. in Abilene. Yeah. I don't know it's what direction. Tell about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. It's hard to, you know, what direction are we facing? Where are we? Are we still in Texas? Can yeah, hill country, not hill country. No, no. West Texas. West. Beginning of West Texas, maybe. Oh look, there's Lubbock. Okay. Yeah, we can see it from here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we can smell it too. Yeah, <laughs> when the wind blows a certain way. So much wind. Well, a lot happened last week to get to this point, and mostly a lot happened in 126A. Uh, with Temple losing to Copper's Cove and Belton losing to Hewitt Midway. Uh, the Tigers lost an opportunity to not only uh, claim a piece of the district championship, which would have been their first since 2009, uh, they lost uh, the Division One number 1 seed as a result of that loss, a home playoff game, and a neutral site playoff game. So now they're going to be on the road, true road game to open up the playoffs. Um, and some of that had to do not only with that loss, um, their seventh in a row to Midway, uh, but it also had to do with uh, Copper's Cove beating Temple. Uh, the Bulldogs get that fourth and final spot out of 12 6 a and uh, bumped Midway up to Division One. So the Panthers have the number one seed in Division One. Temple has the number one in Division Two and gets to host a playoff game, and Copper's Cove goes on the road to face number four Longview. So as it turns out, Copper's Cove is the team that wanted to go play at Longview. Uh, I, apparently. Because that was their only option. They, they wanted to win. Yeah. They wanted to play yeah. and they, get into the playoffs. They say bring on Longview. Let's That's go. Let's gas yeah. up the buses. Why not? Let's hey, go you just got to get there. Take yeah. on those Why logos. not? You yeah. never know. Yeah. They had no better offers, so they said, let's go to Longview. Yeah, yeah. might as well. I, I think Temple maybe thought they had better offers, better options. Yeah, something there. <laughs> Yeah, play at Wildcat Stadium, home playoff game. When's the last time they had one there? 1991, yeah, I was going to say, it had to have been a while. Yeah. Because... Austin LBJ back okay. in the day. Uh, Daniel, were you born yet? 1991. No. No, he wasn't. I was not. Hmm. But I remember it vividly. <laughs> 
So yeah, uh, I mean, these days in 6A, home playoff games are becoming you know commonplace because that's how the system is. But back inter- then, yeah, uh, it, not many. And interestingly uh, enough, yeah. uh, Rockwell's head coach, uh, Rodney Webb, he actually doesn't like the current playoff format in 6A where the, the, the team that finishes higher in district compared to the other team that they're playing gets that home playoff game. He actually said he's he's been against that um, okay. since it went into it. And, and, and he's the one who's getting a home playoff game. Well, because, I mean, as many years as it might work out for you, another year it goes against yeah. you. And I guess if you have confidence in your team, you'll always take your team to a neutral site yeah. and say, let's let's get it on. Well, he also liked yeah. the idea of loading the players up on a bus and the whole right. camaraderie and everything like that goes around played, with moving. You've already yeah. played five probably home games yeah. that year maybe you want to go play at a new stadium that and you know you can go out and seek a a really good playoff venue like the yeah. frisco star or sure. somewhere like that you haven't gotten to go before right and now it's almost like it's incumbent upon you to host the game yeah like, we've already done that a bunch of times so, right you know but like you were saying before we started this i mean that might change uh in a couple of years yeah. you know if uh, we get some division splits right from the get-go right where it's already yeah where you're just um you're playing more schools in your district that are closer in enrollment. Yeah. Now the flip side is you might have to go farther to play some district mm-hmm. games. You know, uh, but I mean, I think like if Temple were, if that were to be Temple's case, they'd probably get lumped in with some of the greater Austin area teams, mm-hmm. maybe the Cedar Parks and Leanders, or, or you know something like that. Yeah. So they probably wouldn't actually have to go that far, but um, it'll, it'll be interesting. But you know, it's conceivable that Temple would have to play maybe like a. a like a Plano East or something that has like fifty three hundred students and Temple sitting there at you know twenty one or twenty two hundred. Yeah. That that system would do away with anything like that, obviously. Right. Yeah. Well, that that could be a couple of years down the road, but a couple of days from now, uh, Temple's welcoming Mesquite Horn, yeah. team that uh, played a heck of a non district schedule and uh, was limping along at zero and seven not too long ago before winning three in a row. Right. That's right. Um, in. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, you know. Mesquite Horn. I mean, they're in the playoffs for the 11th straight season, so it's a very quality program. Uh, uh, you know, they like you said, their non-district schedule. Uh, first seven games, um, you yeah, know, they were 0 seven after seven games. But um, other than Mesquite, who's a five and four team, you had Allen, number one in 6A, 10 and 0. You got Dallas Highland Park, undefeated in 5A. Cedar Hills, nine and one. Arlington, 10 and 0. Rockwall, seven and two and uh, Longview 10 and 0. So you add up those six teams, you get 56 and three. Um, one thing to be pointed out though, uh, I mean, Mesquite Horn lost those games by an average of 23 points. So they played a hellacious schedule, but yeah. they weren't, they were close in a couple of them, but there were some blowouts in there too. So kudos to the schedule they uh, they lined up. Right. Um, but they're dangerous. I mean, um, they, they finally got to play some lesser teams late in the season. And they took care of all those, so they they're on a three game winning streak. Kind of the irony is the uh, three and seven team is on a three game winning streak, and the eight and two is on a two game losing streak. Right. So I mean, uh, that that's a bit ironic. But um, the two main guys to watch out for with Horn are uh, senior quarterback Jermaine Givens, uh, Lamar commitment, very fast running quarterback, uh, over eleven hundred yards rushing. Not the greatest passer, you know. He's got more interceptions than touchdowns, but I saw some film of him. He's very uh, he's kind of like the Spiller kid from Colleen Ellison, but with more size. And um, and then Kendrick Blackshire, sophomore outside linebacker, okay. 6'2", 245. Wow. As a sophomore, uh, 90 tackles in eight games. Wow. Scholarship offers from Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Oklahoma, and Texas A&M, among others. Pretty good. And he played varsity ball as a freshman, which is pretty rare in 6A. So, I mean, they're uh, – Scott Stewart, the Temple coach uh, – Said you know they definitely passed the eye test athletically getting off the bus. They're a, a very fast, big team. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like they may be a little bit one-dimensional offensively, so that's something Temple will try to exploit and you know make them throw the ball mm-hmm. and uh, maybe you know try to close off this quarterback's running lanes if at all possible. But um, um, I think with Temple, it's just you know how healthy are they going into this game? They did mm-hmm. lose a few guys against Coppers Cove. You know if you see some, if you follow Twitter, you got people accusing Temple players of faking injuries in the game um, yeah. <laughs> and all kinds of other things. But um, it looks like Temple might have lost uh, Roman Jackson, one of their starting cornerbacks, to a, a knee injury for at least two to three weeks. Uh, but it looks like the other corner, Markel Reed, is going to be okay to play. And uh, probably, just as importantly, Quentin Johnston, the junior wide receiver, you know, tweaked the knee but uh, against Copperscoe, but apparently he's he's okay. Yeah. So. Um, you know, we mentioned a little bit 
a couple minutes ago, you know, that result against Copper's Cove, uh, losing to the Bulldogs, um, essentially, you know, got Temple that home playoff game. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, on paper, maybe a slightly easier trek deeper into the playoffs. but Including you know, the second round, too. Right. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. this is the playoffs. It is 6A Division two. All these teams are going to be good. Yes. Is there any added pressure on the Wildcats because of what happened last week? Um, you know, going into this one, you know, let, I mean, you know, if they lose, no, so then why did you, yeah. why did you, you know, it just well, se- here's seems the like thing. there might be a little bit more pressure now. That's kind of opened up the can of worms because there's, yeah, there's a feeling in, in uh, some circles that Temple uh, intentionally lost to Coppers Cove to get an easier playoff road. You, you can believe that if you want to. I was at the game. I kind of have a different take on it, but everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Um, I think Temple's. Uh, pulling their starters as the second half wore on was uh, a direct reaction to two things. One was the fact that Tem- uh, Belton fell out of contention at Midway. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, Temple's playing for a share of a district title. And also, Temple lost three starters to injuries in that game. And uh, Stewart said he had seen enough. He he said, no matter who we're playing in the playoffs, whether it's Longview or Horn, I want to take a healthy team as possible. In so you know you can take him at his word or, or choose not to. It's sure you know it's all from your perspective. Yeah. I'd I'd encourage people to think, flip it around. If you're a fan of Longview or Belton or Midway or Colleen, said if your coach was in the same situation as Stewart was, what do you think your head coach would do? And I'm not sure they would have handled it any differently. Um, but you know that's for debate. Uh, but we're here yeah. to talk about this this week's yeah. games. Well, I'm just you yeah. know, and, and it yeah. just seems like you know, I think it was teams, obviously a yeah. difficult situation yeah. to deal with. And I'm you yeah. know, it just and now I almost feel like there's yeah. maybe greater pressure or expectation on Temple now to get past yes. this round. The expectation um, is higher because, yeah. uh, you know, obviously a 3-7 and seven opponent at home is a lot more beatable than a 10-0 and 0 on the road. Yeah. But, yeah, like the pressure would have come from playing Longview, who's yeah. a great team. Right. Now it's more like self-imposed pressure. Yeah. you got to get through this game. And, and, honestly, the next game would be against 5-5 uh, five and five Wiley or 4-6 and six McKinney, obviously at a neutral site, maybe Baylor next Friday. So, I mean – I think Temple needs to get to the third round with this playoff road, and then you're talking about either a 12 and 0 Cy Ranch or a 11 and 1 Spring Westfield. Yeah. So I mean, there's no guarantee Temple will even ever see Longview. And by the way, Longview could get upset by somebody. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So it's I think Temple needs to at least get to that third round to kind of justify the uh, apparent path that it seemed to choose when. If Temple plays its starters the whole game against Coppersco, they almost certainly beat Coppersco. And they're playing in Longview this Friday, yeah. so I mean that they could have taken on that challenge, but uh, you know it's it's it was their decision to make. So sure. I guess you yeah. just anyone has to live with it. Yeah, and t- I mean Temple, you know, like you said, they're now now they're on a two game losing streak. Yeah. And, you know that doesn't that doesn't happen very often. Um, well, I know last year did at the beginning of the year, right? But, Correct. Um, Correct. You Usually, know, though, not going. You don't go going, into the playoffs right. with your only two losses of yeah. the season. You carrying that in, yeah. but yeah, it's but, it's um, unique. Yes. But uh, you know, speaking of playoff roads. Um, Belton's obviously didn't get any easier by uh, by them losing last week to Midway. Um, you know, Rockwall is seven and two. There are two losses. Uh, one was to the aforementioned Longview by seven uh, in a district game, and then the other one was in uh, the season opener against Highland Park, who we've also mentioned, and that was also by seven, forty nine forty two. Quality losses. Yeah. Um, everyone else, you know, they dispatched. I'm pretty sure pretty handily. Um, Rockwall's offense is averaging 48 points and 484 yards a game. Kind of sounds like Belton. And that's what Coach <laughs> Webb over there at uh, Rockwall said. He says he sees a lot of the Tigers in, in what uh, in what that off- his offense does. Um, so it should be a pretty good game in that regard. A lot of athletes running around on the field making plays on offense. Um, both defenses, uh, you kind of give the edge to, to Rockwall as far as numbers go. Um, they've allowed about 25 points a game, and Belton's given up 31 uh, this season, and a lot of that's been in the last couple games or last handful of games. In that triple overtime, yeah, uh, 58, there was 58 points there. Kind of they gave up. They gave up 55 when they scored 86. So you know, there's been been some games that Belton's won pretty handily. Did you just say they scored 86? They did. Yeah, yeah. In regulation, yeah. right? In 48 minutes. I know, I know. And they could have. They could have been more. Um, but the winner of uh, Rockwall and and Belton uh, gets either uh, Rowlett. Seven to two, or the team that Rowlett is playing, which is number one Allen. So, um, 
you, you're Which assuming. Which I think has as many students as yeah. probably Belton and Rockwell combined, right. plus maybe another thousand. Yeah, yeah you're, you're assuming that Allen's going to make it to the second round. Um, and if Belton does too, that'll be the second time in three seasons that those, those two teams have met in the area round. And actually, Belton and Rowlett played uh, four seasons ago, 2015, in the by district round, and Rowlett won 65 64. If you, if you think so. Belton has a big band, right. wait till it's no, Allen. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. <laughs> Big band. Uh, a couple players on uh, Rockwall to keep an eye out for. Um, senior quarterback Jacob Clark. He's committed to Minnesota. He's going to be graduating early and head that way. Uh, he's completed 64% of his passes. That's 27 touchdowns and 2,500 yards. Hope he owns a warm coat. Yeah, and his favorite target uh, is a junior who's already verbally committed to Ohio State, Jackson Smith. He's got 75 catches, 1,300 yards. Uh, and 16 touchdowns. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and then they got a running back who's got uh, over 750 yards rushing and eight touchdowns. So a lot of weapons uh, for Rockwall on offense. But, you know, Belton has their four wide receivers who've combined, combined for 2,500 yards. Jose Perez, Anthony Brown, Anthony Fairbanks, and uh, Denver Holman. Anthony Brown's got a few uh, school records already in place this season. And then thrown to them is Ruben Jimenez, who showed a little bit of his inexperience last week against Midway, but all in all has played pretty well uh, as a sophomore uh, so far. So And talk about a great know. opportunity for a kid who's yeah. conceivably going to be the starter two more seasons yeah. to go into a road playoff game yep. and see what he can do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think we, we uh, split on our picks among uh, the staff, So and I think that's kind of accurate in this case with this game. So... That's six A. Should we move on? Oh, we'd say six. You don't want to break down all aspects of that Cove Longview game. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> go out and talk about some of our passes. We can. Dad, what do you know about those? Other- you know, <laughs> I don't, but I know a few things about some of our local teams. So if we want to jump into that, we can. You know, we had all four of our uh, area teams that play in. Uh, oh no, not all. Well, not all of them, but th- four of our area teams out of three A, ten three A one make it to the playoffs with Academy, well, Troy, Yo, and, and Rockdale. Yeah, um, four out of the five, I guess. Five, yeah, yeah. We so got, we got some Thursday night action. Yeah, Thursday night action, and yeah, um, which is which is cool. You know, spread out that's, the that's cool. <laughs> sp- spread out the playoffs. Uh, so yeah, let's. I guess let's address those Thursday games um, before we move on. Before we reach an hour and a half on this recording, but uh, Academy and West, seven p.m. Thursday at Waco ISD. You know, Academy. Obviously, they're uh, yeah, very happy to be. Back in the playoffs, uh, first time since 2015. Is that right, Daniel? Yeah. And you talked to the Bees' first-year coach, Paul Williams. Paul Williams over there. Yeah. yeah. They're uh, they're excited, yeah. obviously. Um, you know, tough Paul, opponent though. Tough opponent. Well, you know, when you're the fourth seed out of a district, yeah. um, you're you're always going to draw the the tough first round matchup. But um, you know, it, it's pretty much the same message for um, Academy over there. You know, all season long, they've just been focused on themselves. They got a they got a young team this year. They're led by a. Uh, Sophomore quarterback Jerry Cephas, he kind of um, had a little bit of a quarterback competition there with uh, junior Ryan White, but the past few weeks they've settled on Cephas. Paul Williams just thinks he gives them a better chance at winning with his uh, arm, but also more importantly his um, his feet. If they get in trouble there, um, if the pocket breaks down, he can you know get them some yards with his legs. But um, kind of going back to what I said, they're just they're just focused on themselves. You know, um, they they've he said that they've been their own worst enemy this season um, with you know, mental errors and just penalties, you know, kind of a case of, you know, two steps forward, one step back, you know, they, they can never get exactly where they want to be. Um, they've had glimpses where they've, they've proven that they can score the ball and stop the ball on defense, but it just hasn't come all the way together for this team this year. So you're, you're thinking if they're going to get the win in the by district round against West, you know, it's going to have to, you know, finally everything come together, um, you know, even play a little better than they probably think they can perform, but, um, tough first round matchup but again the message is just you know worrying about themselves and making sure that they take care of business before they start worrying about you know what exactly west likes to do and you know other factors outside of themselves well the other thing is that it's not like they're facing a 10 and 0 team i mean like i would no. say like if you flip it around like whitney as the four seed has a lot tougher matchup with cameron being a yeah, nine right. and one i mean you know, right. West is seven and three. They're a good solid team, but yeah. they, you know they're not and that's unbeatable. What, yeah. yeah, and that's what Paul Williams said when I talked to him. He said, you know, you, you're going to face a good team every round of the playoffs. You know, especially the further you go, obviously. But this first round, you know, even facing the top seed out of that district, you know, he said that you know West 
isn't unbeatable. Right. You know, it's it's not like this, um, you know, daunting foe. You know, they've been beaten three times, so, you know, obviously they're capable of being beaten, and any team can be beaten any week. They just, uh, again, they're just going to have to really kind of come all the way together and make sure that they take care of their own um, issues before they start worrying about anything else. One thing you always have to worry about with West is them bringing, like, a bunch of kolaches down and like, offer them as pregame, like, gifts and, you know, Ooh. overloading your stomach with – the delicious kolaches. The kolache ploy. Weighing you down. Man, oh man. Like a goodwill offering. Is that a strategy? I've yeah. never, never. <laughs> it's, I, it's, I'd, I'd fall for it every time. It's potent. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed, you know, these these matchups in 3A Division One, at least in, in our area, I mean, you know, West and Teague and, and Grandview, I feel like we're always, you know, these teams are always playing the Academies, the Troys, mm-hmm. the, the Yos, the Rockdales. I mean, and they're always I mean, how many times has really Yo matched good. up with Teague and yeah. Grandview? Yeah, and, and Rockdale yeah. the same way. Yeah. I mean, Rockdale Grandview played, I think, just two years ago. Or no, they played, this would be like the like third year in a row, I think, right? Or no. No, they didn't play them last think, year, did they? Yeah, I don't think they did. But, but two years ago, I know they yeah. did, and Grandview beat them. But, I mean, th- these matchups are always, yeah, like, very familiar. super competitive and yeah, familiar. They're all, and they're all pretty intriguing, like Daniel yeah. said. I mean, like, you know, Wes is a beatable team. I think, I kind of think, that you know, the winners of these games will probably meet up again going down the road. I mean, yeah, because this, you look at this region, and these are, these two districts probably have the, the top teams in this region. Mm-hmm. I would, Troy has a winnable game, Yo. I think Yo might actually have the toughest fight. Maybe it could be interesting. I mean, all these games would be worth yeah. watching. I mean, Teague T get five and five sounds you know like a, a down year for them, but mm-hmm. playing well all, lately. Yeah, all I know is like you know every time I've seen them, it's always been in the second, third, or fourth round the last yeah. four or yeah. five years. And yeah. they um, dominated Cameron Yo in the first round of the playoffs last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, they they always have uh, athletes who can make plays. Um, so I mean, Troy, you know, Troy's obviously looked really good this year. What are they eight and two? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, beat Rockdale, which is a big win for them. Um, but you know that that's that's going to be a really good matchup for Troy. So Daniel, if you're the Teague defense, what's your number one priority <laughs> in that game against Troy? You know, <laughs> <laughs> the fun answer, well, the honest answer is obviously the run game. You know, when you've got a running back with the capability of Zach Robachik, you know, he finished second in the area in uh, yards rushing. Of course, that's going to be your number one priority. Um, but again, you know, Ronnie Porter, head coach over at Troy, he's preached this all season long. You know, they can't be just one dimensional. They've got to be able to pass the ball and offer you different looks. And they've done that. Um, he said that's really the key um, or one of the keys as why they're in this position. You know, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're just going to run the ball every single play, you know, defenses are going to catch on, obviously. And, you know, that's when you run into problems. But um, they're not extremely efficient in the past game but they're efficient enough to where it'll get you results it'll allow you to move the ball better it'll allow you to open things up it'll keep the defense guessing from time to time and you know just having that option really opens up a lot of lanes for you so you know obviously run game from here on out is going to be huge for Troy um, however far Zach Herbacek can carry that um, load good for them um, but Riley Cosper, quarterback for Troy, he's he's also stepped up, and again, another reason why you know they're eight and two, and you know in a uh, by district round. And we mentioned you know Ruben Jimenez, a sophomore over at Belton, and right. her a sophomore too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, geez, Louise, a lot of young. Yeah, yeah. Rockdale has a sophomore starting quarterback, yeah, right, yeah. Robinson. Jace Robinson, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so a lot a lot of uh, young guys uh, playing well and getting some good experience uh, in as just tenth graders. Yes. But yeah, Rockdale and Grandview. Uh, Saturday at Waco. I mean, that's that's gonna be big. You know, I, you know defending three A Division One champions Rockdale. Not not the easiast first round match, like we've been saying. I mean, yeah. you just you know that one that one's tough to call. Seven and three Rockdale, eight and two Grandview. Yeah. And some of Rockdale's best players are sophomores. Right? I mean, offensively yeah. at least. And uh, I mean, Grandview that has outscored their opponents by over three hundred points yeah. this year. They I mean they look very explosive. But you know, Rockdale's not going to be an easy out. You've got a lot of guys. They were at least around that state championship mm-hmm. team, and some who played some key roles. Mm-hmm. And Jeff Miller hasn't forgotten how to coach. And um, I, that, if you're Grandview, that's a tough first round draw, um, no matter how good of a season they've had. And I think a lot of people just forget that you know, just just because your record is five and five, or maybe six and four, or whatnot, when you play in a district. You know, as tough as ten three a one. I mean, your your record is super, and even nine three a one. Exactly. Where these yeah. Teams are coming I mean, from. you know, it's mm-hmm. just you when during district play every week is pretty much just you're going in there knowing it's going to be a battle. Um, you know, it it really kind of molds these teams into the the playoff capability that they are. And you know, at this point, 
like we all know, you know, if you're in the playoffs, you're in for a reason. And, you know, records are kind of indicative of your talent, but they obviously don't tell the whole story. Yeah, and we briefly talked about Yo, and we can go back to them real quick. I mean, I can't feel like the Yeomen are on their redemption tour, or it's really mm-hmm. starting at this point, you know, after last year. Uh, what were they, four and seven? Um, oh, you know. after being ranked number one in right. the state yeah, preseason. Yeah. They, that, didn't, they didn't need any rankings yeah, this not, year. Now they're nine and one, right? And that, yeah. that loss was, uh, to get was it Giddings, and it wasn't by one yeah. yeah. Didn't they, like, wait, like, an hour to kick a field goal or something through yeah. the rain or lightning yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They have that. yeah. So, I mean, Slightly the Yeomen, obviously, are, are, are going to be on a mission here when the playoffs start. Well, and I don't know, if, Marcus, if you know anything about this. Earlier in the year, like, I think Cameron and, and Whitney were originally supposed to play non-district against each other, and I believe Whitney – uh, late in the game, canceled. Oh, was that how that? The the okay. series, and that's why Cameron had to go find that private school, like St. John the 18th or yeah, something. Katie's, Katie. Yeah, I knew Nine, somebody. 19th, I, I knew somebody had backed. I think there there's a little bit of bad blood between Cameron and Whitney because of that, and here they crash into each other in the first round of the playoffs. And, interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I know there's probably more to it than what we're privy to, but that that could be interesting. You got Cameron that's outscored opponents by 300 points on the year, so. They're pretty potent. A little bit. You <laughs> and know, and it's it's weird to th- – yeah. I mean, I kind of feel like even at 9-1, and one, the district champion, Yo almost seems under the radar or something this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they haven't – you know, not a lot of people have been talking about them, at least outside of this area. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not getting that, you know, hounding by media from other – Parts of the state and all yeah. that stuff. I mean, they're they're kind of just that's how quietly. Tommy Brashear like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that's just, that, they're just they're just quietly Loki. going about their business and beating teams and yeah. you know winning district championships. They're like with the old like no name Dolphins, you know, from yeah. seventy two or whatever, right? He's like, we don't need stars. We're just gonna beat yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's exactly what Tommy Brashear said over there. You know, he he admitted last year that you know the group of guys that they had um, they had a problem with kind of going into games thinking that you know, they were bigger and badder than what they really were, and they didn't always prepare to the level they needed to. So that was the main reason why they struggled last year. But he said this year, you know, last year just left such a bad taste in their mouth that, you know, they didn't want that to happen again, and they were looking to get back to uh, the Yo standard, which is a very high standard for any program. Um, but you're, again... You're yeah. not allowed to have two straight bad seasons in Canada. Not in right? Yo. I, don't, yeah. I, I, think yeah. just, <laughs> I think there's a city ordinance saying that that can't It was happen, bad so. enough to, to lose to Rockdale two years in a row. You yeah. can't have two bad seasons yeah. in a row overall. Yeah. So. No, just quick tidbit. Um, Brashear said, you know, he's confident in his offense and uh, defense. We've talked about it all season long. Offensively, they're probably the most balanced team that we've covered this season. Um, you know, run versus pass. Um, But then with Whitney on uh, defense, he said they feel confident. The only thing he's kind of worried about is that they've got a strong dual-threat quarterback. Um, He said it's probably going to be the best quarterback they faced up to this point in the season. Um, But he said if the offense can take care of things and, um, you know, with that run game, kind of keep the Whitney offense on the sideline as much as possible, he feels confident Mm -hmm. that they can get that win. Yeah, that's what's made Yo as successful as they were during their nice run of all those state championships. We're so balanced that just run short passes, short passes to get four or five yards here and there, hand it off, get four or five yards. They had a decent and running back. they bring everybody in, they'll just hit you for a long bomb. Yeah. Yeah. What did you say? I said they had a decent running back. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that helped. Yes, yeah. yeah. He helped on that balance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so, I mean, and they've got – it looks like they really kind of have that balance again this year, and it's kind of working well for them. And they'll, they'll be, a, you know – like I said earlier, it'll be tough. All these games will be intriguing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I thought, I thought it was yeah. interesting that Cameron was supposed to start their season in Mejia. <laughs> right. Remember, they had to move that game to Alvarado. Because the field wasn't ready. The, and uh, now they're playing this playoff game at Mejia. Because the field is ready now. field's ready. New turf. Okay. Yeah. And some covered seating at Mejia. Apparently. Oh. Almost looks like a horse racing track, like a grandstand with some, you know, so if it's raining. And, and, uh, well, I would bet on Cameron in this one. Their, their <laughs> athletic director. Bet, um, bet on Cameron. <laughs> he got back to me today, uh, you know, because I called and said I was going to be out there covering the game Thursday. So appreciate him getting back to me, as well as Coach Webb. I might as well just throw that out there over at Rockwall. I mean, opposing coaches. Mike Overton. Yeah, Mesquite different, Horn, different great, coaches great from out of our coverage area getting back to us is always helpful. So yep. we definitely appreciate when uh, – when they you know help us out like that. One quick anecdote for yeah. the Mesquite Horn side. Yeah. Um, their coach said when they were zero and seven, they so they got pounded by Longview like fifty to three. Mm-hmm. Then they went into their bye week, mm-hmm. and he said he said you know normally you just go back to basics and do all the fundamentals and just you know he said but he's a real veteran coach. He said though they just decided to try something new. He said they just took a break from football. 
like they only practiced once that open week, so they did like fun activities, mm-hmm. team bonding. Sure. They didn't even really go back to football until the next week when they had a game, and they're three and zero since then. So right he on. said it went against everything his teaching, uh, his background in coaching taught him. But he's like, sometimes you got got to take a new approach, and yeah. it worked for them. So that was kind of cool. I've covered a few teams that took a break from football, <laughs> not for, for the whole season. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's the second quarter. You're, you're not referencing Port <laughs> Isabel, are you, Mark? Oh man, we never mater. take a break down there. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> Mama Mater's taking playoffs. some breaks from whole football seasons. <laughs> um, well, speaking of uh, a coach who seems to know a few things, uh, Charlie Roden over there in Rogers. Um, sounds like he's got some things in progress over there. Uh, and the Eagles back in the playoffs after a year off, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this time they're in with a winning record. Uh, six and four rise out how they finish the regular season. Um, with facing some really tough teams. Oh yeah, in, in a yeah. Non- I mean, in district especially. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, Lexington and Clifton. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah. Two teams with you know only one loss, I think, in in district and mm-hmm. maybe one overall. Yeah. But um, but uh, Rogers taking on Edgewood. I don't really know much about Edgewood, but um, they're good. Yeah, <laughs> they're eight and one. Yeah. Does anyone even know where Edgewood is? It's over there somewhere. It's, right. it's on the edge it's on of the, the woods, edge, yeah, yeah. I right. think. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know much. The tipping about, point of <laughs> trees and not trees. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's out east a little bit. I don't know much about Edgewood, but there ain't one there on the last was to Buffalo, giving Buffalo their first one, first undefeated regular season, 1961, I believe. Mm, okay. But And, you know, I mean, that was only, I think, two weeks ago is when those two teams played, so... Yeah, I don't know much about Edgewood, but I know it's going to be they're going to be a really potent foe for Rogers. Yeah, it'll be a good test for Rogers. See how they can do. Rogers is happy to be back in the playoffs. They're going to be hungry. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, they got some playmakers over there. You know what's interesting yeah. is the winner of that game plays Comanche, which isn't super far away, or Nakona, which like Nakona is not anywhere close to here. It's like they make the baseball gloves there. It's like way up by almost like the Vernon or Wichita Falls. Wow, like mm. that would be a really far away place to go play an area <laughs> it's area but it's not in the area no by like any stretch <laughs> yeah that, that's kind of that starts to happen once you yeah. get to those lower <laughs> classifications yeah. right well you like mean, cameron they start to run into people like woodville and die ball and yeah. you know winnie east chambers i mean that's not anywhere close to here but it's no. in your region yeah, so it, allegedly well it's got to go yeah. um uh, all right another district champion uh from our area holland playing junction uh, 7 o'clock on Friday. Junction boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have a chance to talk to yep. Coach Talbot over there at Holland? I mean, obviously the Hornets yeah. are having a, a really good season, um, yeah. district champions. and Yeah, uh, heck, heck of a season they've been having. Uh, so good that uh, Talbot didn't even think this would uh, kind of transpire. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they they had the historical season last year. Where I think um, went in back-to-back playoff games for the first time since 1958. First ten win season since 1962, so I mean you're you're talking about decades there, and um, lost a lot of key players to a graduation, a lot of seniors graduating, and you know no longer there. So he wasn't exactly sure how this this squad would kind of stack up this year. Um, he still felt confident enough that you know they were going to make it into the postseason. Um, this is the Hornets' fourth trip in the last five years, so they're kind of becoming a a steady force there in Class Two A One. Um, but again, he, he flat out said he didn't think that they were going to go through the season as um, undefeated district champs. So he and said, they're, they're smoking people, too. The yeah. defense has mm-hmm. hardly given up anything. And I don't know if that's, you know, obviously some of it is they're really good on defense and some of it is probably some inept offenses I've heard from in that a, district. But I've heard from a source <laughs> I mean, of mine yeah. uh, that lives in Holland that says they've been involved in some really physical, nasty games this year yeah. with a lot of, acrimony on both sides of the Thorndale game I yes. believe the Milano game last week like, okay. like really nasty games yeah. uh, just bad blood type games which is interesting yeah. I mean you don't you don't see that maybe at the higher levels we don't see that that much but maybe no. you get the smaller towns together and they don't like each other and yeah, yeah kids are playing both sides of the ball yeah. I mean it football's everything down there getting a little dicey out there. yeah yeah for sure uh but that uh, I'm not sure. Two and eight junction. Yeah, they right. should've, they yeah should've, that's no, yeah that's no, yeah. No, Holland sure. should move on, but that that road, the you know, that Holland has to go to to reach state is is difficult, like it was last year. I think yeah, they had to play Refugio, yeah. uh in that 
third round. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but I was looking ahead, and I think, round, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't remember who it is, but it's one of those teams that's up there uh, Mason, in the state. Yeah, okay, I think it was Mason so. that I was seeing. Didn't the coaches tell you not to look ahead, just to focus in on each and every opponent? Well, that's we, not we, that's we, not we, how we're that's not how we're, we can summer, <laughs> operate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 we're we're looking ahead to the, the June sixteenth when the sports stop. <laughs> Some coaches pretend they don't even know who they have the next week. I mean, yeah. we, oh, come on, coaches, yeah. we know that's exactly. right. Yeah, at home side, you have you have Mason, you have Weimer, yeah, um, and then the next battle would probably be against the Three Rivers, the seven and two Three Rivers team. Mm. But I mean, it's a good opening round for Holland. Get a, a junction team, and then then you can re- worry about Refugio. A little bit further down the road, you got to get there first. Yeah. But remember, I mean, remember their um, tough non-district slate. I mean, yeah. you know, you play those mm-hmm. tough teams like they did. Mark, and, mm-hmm. yeah. only loss. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the the goal is you play teams like that. That'll kind of, I feel like, more mentally prepare you, so you don't get just overwhelmed by you know these teams with the you know the historic programs and whatnot. But you will, we'll have to start will. looking uh, possibly when the last time Holland won eleven games, right? I mean, if they already have nine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. last year was their first 10 win season. When I like the, like the old team that he mentioned back yeah. in the late 50s and 60s, I think back then they played Class B ball, yeah. which I think you only could play a 12 game season. Yeah, okay. It was like a regional championship, yeah. was as far as they would even let you go. So I don't yeah, know. Ele- keep talking off <laughs> 11, 11 might be the, would be the school record. Who knows? Yeah. Well, we're running out of tape, but. We'll keep going as Wait, you know. As long. I don't know. I was just I just made that up. <laughs> just just. Dad has no idea yeah. what tape is. Um, what is that tape? But before that, in two A Division two, Granger versus Louisa, uh, another of our area's district champions. We had three of them this year uh, in this area. Yo and Holland and Granger and Granger has not lost since its opener, right? Right. I mean, they, the lines are cruising along. That's uh, and our and our boss, our sports editor, Eric Drennan, was. Um, he, he's he's glad to see Granger kind of rolling along. I guess you know he's he was here. I guess you know back in the early two thousands when Granger was doing some some good stuff, and now the lines are back and um, you know playing a three and seven team in the first round. Uh, so let's see how far Granger can go. Right? Did you talk right. to Coach? Uh, no, I didn't get okay. to talk to Walt Brock. But okay. I mean, you know, Granger all season long. You know, they they really just excelled at throwing different looks at teams. They like to keep teams head on a swivel. Mm-hmm. They can hurt you with the run game with Ryan uh, Pickett, um, Thomas Rose, their quarterback, has got a lot of options there at receivers. Um, so again, you know, they and their defense. I think they had one of the better. No, they had the uh, the top defense actually in the area. Um, averaged one hundred and fifty eight point nine yards um, allowed per game. So I mean, the defense has been phenomenal so i think in during district they only allowed 20 points maybe once if that i mm-hmm. mean i mean most of their opponents have only tallied just single digit output so I mean, yeah yeah granger's got to be feeling pretty good going in the postseason and you know they got to be feeling pretty good about their matchup to start off too cool marcus has been writing something down um, can we get that um i was just going back to holland yeah of course last year they got those 10 wins that was the yeah. first time they did that 62 right and they haven't had more than that since 1958 when they were 12-0-0. Okay. And that's their best season ever is 12 wins. So. Okay. So All right. They can grab right three there. wins. They can tie the yeah. what we think is the school record for wins, 12 in, a, 12 in a season. Looks like it. Yep. And speaking of notes, looks like Greg has some notes on the taps. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Um, this is a pretty game. good first-round matchup. I mean, for Central Texas Central Christian. Central Texas Christian at Tomball Rose Hill, true road game for the Lions. Eight and two at eight and one. Yeah, kind of interesting. Tomball Rose Hill outscored their opponents three hundred and sixty to twenty one this season, but at least according to Max Preps, right. lost six to nothing last week to Beaumont Legacy. Okay, so they got shut out, even though they basically steamrolled people all year. So yeah. if that's legit, and then I mean the Lions have had a really strong Maybe year. Maybe they threw that game. Yeah, they were <laughs> yeah. Trying to get a home field. Of, uh, yeah, <laughs> never never heard of that oh. scenario. Never never heard of it. <laughs> Um, don't know how that taps bracket works out exactly, but uh, I think as long as the CTCS has uh, what Rylan Turner Ryland running Turner. the ball, big boy, good running back, and they've only allowed 117 points in 10 games, so I would say you have a, a pretty good defense. They've, they haven't been as strong lately, but mm-hmm. it's still a pretty formidable team, and I think they'll have a chance to win on the road, but uh, tough tough order at Tomball yeah. Rose Hill. And then, like we said, Holy Trinity Catholic getting the, the late start on a Saturday, 7 p.m. in Abilene Christian. School. 
not university, mm. Abilene Christian School. And I saw Celtics maybe listed as about a 27-point yeah. underdog okay. or 22-point. I, mean, I mean, if you're into they that have, They thing. have some playmakers over there, but I think their biggest thing, which has they been just, happening the last few years, they can't stay healthy through an entire game, healthy, right? Can't, can't stop uh, teams on offense. Yeah. So it's kind of, but, a, kind of a down year. But it's the playoffs. So. And they still got Celtic pride. That's it. That's it. Uh, UMHB opens up its uh, – Postseason Saturday at noon at home against Harden Simmons team they beat twenty six nothing is that what it was in yeah. conference play a few I guess weeks the NCAA ago? wants them to validate that win by doing it again I guess so, like let's just meet again in yeah. five weeks and see if you can do it again at the same yeah field. I mean it's been cold to start out this week but uh, the weather's supposed to be nice this weekend real good uh, so that might be something to do if not. I don't know. Watch TV or whatever. You're not going to find a nicer Division Three stadium. No. Anyway, not a good experience for sure. Also, just tidbit. Yes. UMHB potentially doesn't have to leave the state of Texas to win a national yeah. championship yeah. this year, which would be nice. Home cooking. Yeah. Four home games potentially plus uh, what the Woodlands, Shenandoah yeah. over yeah, there in the uh, Greater Houston area. In that. Yep. Yep. That'll be something to look forward to. As is. June sixteenth, when the summer rolls around. That's right. right? Man. Yeah, I'm, I've got plans made already. Right around the corner. Cool. <laughs> we do look ahead over here. Yeah. So. See everybody on the road this week. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, forty three minutes, everybody. Can you we're believe still it? Rolling. I know. Forty three minutes. All right. So long. Bye. Bye.